Hey, hey everyone, Melissa Terzis, DC Real Estate Mama. And today we are going to talk about condos and homeowners associations. Yay! All right, so condos, they are an awesome and affordable and convenient way to become a homeowner. Why do I say convenient? Well, if you buy a house, you've got a yard to maintain. You've got grass to mow, you've got a driveway to shovel, you've got stuff that you've got to deal with in a house that you don't have to deal with in a condo. And so that's why they become a very appealing place to live for people who just don't want the extra stuff that comes with owning a house. But what you need to know about condos is that they are governed by what they call a unit owners association or a condo association. And as such, when you put a contract on a condominium, you are given an opportunity to review what they call condo docs or a resale package. And what is this resale package going to include? Well, it's going to have the bylaws that are recorded for the condominium association, the rules and regulations, a package of their financials, and hopefully you're going to get copies of recent board meeting minutes so that you can see what's been going on in the community. Um, also, hopefully these are going to be electronic and not hard copy, because if they are hard copy, get ready to build some muscles toting this thing back to your house. Okay, so once you get condo documents, you're probably gonna be wondering, what am I supposed to be doing with these? What should I be looking for? Well, let's do the Cliff's Notes versions because I know some of you are gonna dive off of here in a quick second. You wanna read the documents and make sure that there are no restrictions in these documents in the association for how you want to use your property. So there's gonna be rules on pets and parking and storage and how you can decorate your condo, at least as far as what's visible to the outside. So things you can put in the windows and things like that. Um, you also want to check the financial statements to make sure that they're financially sound. And if you don't feel comfortable reviewing all of this to make sure that it makes sense and everything, then you can also hire an attorney to review for you. Just keep in mind, attorneys' jobs are to find problems and to point you out at problems. So they're going to have a lot of questions, most likely, about these documents. But they can go a long way toward making you feel more comfortable about the association that you are buying into. Now, why does all this matter? Well, there are penalties for not a, being in compliance with condo rules. Ouch, 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 ouch. Not that kind of penalty. But if you think you're going to just dodge a condo board by taking the back stairs and trying to hide from them if you're in non-compliance, they're going to find you. If you get something uh, that happens in your condo and you maybe get fined, like you were playing your music too loud and they warned you one too many times, or you've got three pets and you're only allowed to have two, the condo board is within their rights to fine you. And you may think like, all right, well, that's big deal. I'm not gonna pay that fine. You're wrong. You actually do have to pay the fine. You're not gonna be able to sell or refinance your house without paying it. And the only alternative to you is if you wanted to sue the condo association, but now you're talking about thousands of potential dollars in bringing a lawsuit as opposed to maybe the hundred or two hundred dollar fee that they've assessed you for the fine it may just be easier to go ahead and pay that off all right now how much time do you have to review these condo documents well that's a super important question so condo do document review periods in the DC area. In DC, you have three business days to review condo documents. In Virginia, you have three calendar days. And in Maryland, you have seven, seven calendar days for condos and five calendar days for homeowners associations. All right, let's do a quick note about a difference between condos and homeowners associations because people often wonder what the difference is and sometimes use the terms interchangeably. So. A homeowners association is typically houses or single family homes where each person owns the land that's underneath them. So because they own the land that's underneath them, the setup with the jurisdiction that oversees land development and building says that each of these is its own separate law, its own separate entity, and thus they can't be subject to some of the same things that you could in say more of a shared situation like a condo where you think of a high rise, you're all, nobody really owns the land underneath, but the condo association does 
And technically, if you want to look at this legally, each person in the condo owns a fractional percentage of that land underneath. But you can't just go downstairs to like, you know, the plot of land next to the playground and go, this part's mine, because that's not how this works. Everybody communally owns all of the land together. And as such, it's subject to an association that governs it and makes rules regarding it that people who live there have to abide by. Now, you... Probably, all right, let's go back to the uh, the review periods. In this period of time, what do you want to do? Well, you want to ask as many questions as you have that you may impact anything regarding the finances or how you're planning to use your condo. It may say, you know, I don't know, two pets, you may have three, and you may be able to get away with having a third if you just ask permission, or they may say no can do, and you're not gonna get rid of one of your pets. I hope you're not going to. So then you would say, all right, this condo's not for me because they're not gonna allow all of my family members to live here. All right, let's dive deeper into each of the documents that you're going to receive. Let's start with the condo bylaws. What are these? Well, they're very long, they're very boring, and they're very boilerplate. So they're gonna cover everything from the operation of the condo, who the board members are in terms of positions, not naming who the, who the actual board members are because that gets voted, but saying there's a president, there's a vice president, there's a secretary. It's gonna go over what each of these people need to handle and what they're responsible for. And it, they're also gonna have other rules in here that govern the condo. So you want to rent your place someday, you want to use beach towels as curtains that everybody from the outside can see, you want to paint your front door pink, uh, all that info is going to be here. All right, what about if you want to renovate your condo? Well, there's going to be rules regarding that as well, and you're going to find a good portion of those in the bylaws, and you may have even more fine-tuned information about how the process goes in the rules and regulations. For example, most condos are not going to allow your unlicensed Uncle Lou to come in and just rip out your kitchen. I can rip all of this out. Do you have a license? A what? Condos are gonna to want to have the contractor's plans. They're gonna to wanna to have proof of insurance. They're gonna to wanna to have their license. They wanna know that the person that you're bringing into the building to do work to your combined asset here, which is the building or community, that that person is licensed and competent to do work that they are going to do, not that they're going to unplug a bunch of things, let the water come gushing out, and then go to lunch and flood everybody in the building. Right. In homeowners associations, they have a same similar type of like review or process. Usually there's a separate committee called the architectural review committee. You would have to submit your plans and information to them if you wanted to do any type of renovation. Usually this is just for the outside of the house. They're not going to care so much if you're renovating a kitchen or something on the inside, typically. But you want to read these docs to find out. For the most part, it's going to be related to the outside of the house. And this is because they want to preserve a certain look in the community, right? They don't want you to come in with a purple front door or to use a empty old toilet as a planter for some flowers because people have done that and they'll argue that it's adorable but the neighbors may not think so uh, and so the bylaws here really can't be easily changed and typically they're going to say that to make a change to the bylaws you need two-thirds of the owners to agree and sometimes it's two-thirds to three-fourths of the mortgage holders to agree now that may sound crazy to you because why do they want the bank to also agree who holds all of these people's individual mortgages well if you think about it you know they've got some rights in there too even though they've granted the mortgage to the individual condo owners who may be in there they want to make sure that the building's not going to prove something totally off the wall that could erode the value and thus turn into people maybe not wanting to live there or the price is going down and then people saying I'm gonna walk away from this and not even pay my mortgage back so that's why they want to have kind of a look through at what you're planning on doing uh, as far as these condo docs being boilerplate you're probably also asking why are they boilerplate well they don't write brand new condo docs for every single condo that comes into an exist in existence normally the initial person that's making the community which is the developer and building 
builder, they'll contact an attorney and they'll say, we're putting together a condo association, we need documents. The attorney will start with something that's very boilerplate that they've used for other condominiums. I've seen it where this even comes from other areas. So it's gonna have things that like don't apply at all. And you're looking at it thinking like, well, how did this get in here? You know, it's it's not for any reason other than the fact that they pulled a boilerplate document. Um, and they don't reinvent the wheel, which is, it gives them a place to start. And I know this because I actually used to do this for a couple home builders that I worked for, where I would get the condo documents, I would have some cursory review periods with the attorneys, and then I would bring it to sales and say, okay, what do you want changed here or added or removed? You know, you, something like fences was a big deal. You may get a boilerplate doc from somewhere else in the country where they just, you know, it's not common to do fences. And then the salespeople may look at it and say, hey, if we don't allow fences in this community, it's really going to impact our sales. So they'll add that in. We'll send those comments to the attorney. It comes back and forth. And then you get a document that you essentially feel like you can work with. Sales just wants to make sure that there's nothing input in there that's going to prevent them from selling in a timely manner. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it off here. We're gonna pick up next week with part two. I don't want it to get too long and grueling about everything that you've gotta know about reviewing a condo doc package. So I am Melissa Terzis, DC Real Estate Mama. My contact info is coming next. If you have any questions about condo docs or anything homeowners association related, let me know.